YouTube. What's the deal? It's time to get real with Jahaira. It's time to get real with Jahaira. YouTube. What's the deal? YouTube, what's the deal? It's your girl Jahira and I am back. What's up, y'all? So, um, I'm starting this new series for the channel. And I'm going to try to do one of these every single month. And I believe I'm calling it Trans 101. I'm doing this on the, on the request and the advice of a friend of mine who reminded me that for many of my subtastics, possibly including you, I am the only trans person that you might know, that you might be consistently um, in contact with. So I wanted to give y'all um, just a couple of uh, lessons, some advice, some, some discussion, as well as for my, my subtastics who are part of the LGBTQ community. Um, who have come to me with concerns that I'm not necessarily um, immersing my channel in that neck of the proverbial woods, so to speak. Um, I, I know that my, my core demographic tends to be cisgender women, and if you don't know what cisgender is, I will get into that very shortly. But, um, but you guys are not forgotten. Um, I classify myself as a woman of trans experience, which is to say that, you know, my experience to womanhood has been one in transition. And so this is for y'all. And, um, if it applies, then feel free to watch. And if it doesn't stay tuned for a future video, but, um, I have to do this. I have to step out and I have to discuss what's going on in, in my community because these are my people. And um, I hope you guys can get something out of it. So please enjoy. So here's the thing. I realize that the lighting in here stinks, but I'm actually doing this by the, the glow of my laptop as well as by candlelight. I've got my Better Homes and Gardens white Casablanca lily scented candle going. <laughs> And um, it smells incredible. P.S. I got to tell you, get it at Walmart. You'll thank me later. But um, here's the thing. And this is really what I wanted to talk about. I don't know how many of you saw the episode of Katie Couric, uh, the Katie Couric talk show, which aired a couple of days ago now, maybe two days ago, um, that featured a uh, trans model and advocate and beautiful human being whom I've had the pleasure of getting to know, uh, Carmen Carrera, as well as uh, the incredibly talented and gorgeous actress and advocate Laverne Cox, who uh, co-stars on Orange is the New Black. And Katie, with, I believe, you know, reasonable intentions, asked the two of these ladies about their genitalia as part of the discussion being that they were trans people. And they both demurred, and Laverne actually took some time to kind of really educate and bring trans issues to the forefront of the conversation. She completely redirected Katie, and it was such a you-go-girl moment. It was beautiful for me. You know, I... Um, and, and part of the reason I'm starting this series is because I'm asked all the time from various people about surgery, about my experience as a trans woman. Um, and it really blew up after I did the video where I revealed that I had had silicone injections in my face, in my face and my lips, um, and kind of walked you all through that process. People became very curious, very curious, and they, they really wanted to know I think I've been very upfront about some of the surgical procedures that I've had throughout the course of my life. I tried, and I believe I've succeeded in keeping it a very natural aesthetic. Um, things like reshaping my teeth because um, anatomical males 
and anatomical females have different shaped teeth and a dentist can discover your biology just by opening your mouth. <coughs> Things like that. A lot of what I did was very subtle and very natural, probably the most, um, you know, visually off-putting um, procedure I had done was breast augmentation. And that's only because I went from, you know, a, a relatively <laughs> the plains of Colorado to a, a reasonably buxom woman. <laughs> but I have never really spoken on YouTube about the state of my genitals. And that has been quasi-deliberate, really. And I have never spoken about it because it is none of your business. And I don't say that to be caustic, and I don't say that to be haughty or cruel. You know, it, it's certainly not a reflection on how I feel about you because I love you. I really, really do. And I hope you know that. I mean, I, I, I feel as though I've done a fairly bang-up job of expressing that. But it's just the most invasive and personal aspect of, of somebody's being. Do you understand what I'm saying? You know, we have seen, and I'm going to be posting a couple of links below, but we've seen Katie Couric ask about this. We saw Barbara Walters inquire, you know, about the state of Jenna Takalova's genitals on national television. And I put myself in the shoes of somebody. You know what I'm saying? Because depending upon the trajectory of my life, who's to say that I won't end up on national television under an interviewer's gaze? And for them to ask me about, you know, whether or not I've, I've surgically altered my genitals or, or if and when or how or any permutation of those kind of things. And it was always kind of like a, well, what would you say in that scenario kind of question that mulled around in my head? And I, I have always come up with these really glib answers like, well, I'll talk about mine if you talk about yours. But honestly, give that some thought for just, just a second here. Can you imagine, and, and just follow me, I'm going to bless you. Imagine, if you will, for just a second, you are watching television minding your own business, and Barbara Walters is on air doing what Barbara Walters does, looking concerned and empathic and, and formidable and things of that nature. And somebody, clear out of the blue, was to turn around and ask Barbara Walters about the state of her vagina. Whether at her advanced age she's experienced vaginal dryness, how sex is at Good God knows what her age is. You know, just, just, how's her vagina really looking these days? Let's talk about your vag. How's the V going? If you are anything like me, I think you might just have a stroke on the spot. At the very least, your jaw would be on the floor and your eyes would be like, in the cartoon version, it'd be like the auga, auga. <laughs> You would be stunned. You would be stunned and you might just be horrified. And you would be perfectly justified in that response. So why, might I ask, do cisgender, or I should elaborate, those individuals whose genitalia has been a match to their mind frame their entire life, anatomical females who have always considered themselves female and anatomical males who always considered themselves male, those are cisgender individuals. Why do cisgender people feel entitled to ask these probing, ridiculously personal questions about trans individuals? Now, let me be clear. I understand the concept of natural curiosity. I understand the concept of wanting to gain a better understanding of an issue that you may not be personally invested in and that you may not personally be aware of. I get all that. I really do. 
there's plenty of stuff that I don't understand that I would love to get to know better. But that's why we have Google searches. I mean, there are resources, I mean, ad nauseum available to somebody who wants to understand the surgical aspect of a transsexual experience better. It is the height of inappropriate to take somebody, a glorified stranger at that, and to ask them about their crotch. Why? <laughs> if I was Nina, I would say crouch. But yeah, it's just, it's really unbelievable. It's really unbelievable. And forgive the pun because it's coming. It's just ballsy. It takes a lot of balls to ask somebody about, you know, what's going on in their, you know, Christmas. Which is what I always call it. But yeah, it's just, it's, it's crazy. And it's not okay. It's never okay. So should you find yourself in a position where you are in, in you know, discussing anything with a trans individual, just, you know, uh, uh, unless you're, you know, presenting yourself as a personal invitation to the crotch, don't ask about it. Really don't. It's the kind of thing, like, for people that I know, people that are in my, my personal circle, they know about, you know, all the surgical procedures I've had done. They know these things because I don't necessarily have a problem owning up to it. I don't. You know what I mean? I, be, but with that being said, what works for me doesn't necessarily all work for others. And again, <coughs> this is one of those things where I have to personally know you to get to that level where we can discuss it. You know what I'm saying? And especially trying to discuss it with somebody who is not trans, I can tell you as a trans person, it's difficult. It's difficult and frankly, it kind of sucks. Because if you talk about it to a cisgender guy, like their first instinct is like, oh my God, oh, oh, Jesus, I would never, ew, oh, ew. Like they go through this whole convulsion, seizure salad, hold the dressing, like it's, it's a lot with them. And if you talk about it to a cisgender woman, I will say the responses are varied, but it kind of, like, there's only so many times that I'm willing, you know, to, to answer the question as to whether or not I can get my period, or do I feel bad that I, I won't be able to bear children, and, and st you know, it's just, it's taxing. It's a taxing process. And it really does great on your nerves. And it takes a certain amount of, you know, internal fortitude just to be able to withstand the follow-up questions. Because those can be the worst. So yeah, I mean, I just really wanted to put that out there. You know, it's your crotch. It's yours. It's all yours. You're, you might be sitting on it right now. Like, it's yours. And how much you choose to divulge about it should be entirely up to you, but it is never in good taste to ask somebody about theirs. That's all I'm going to say about that. That's it. Uh, yeah, see you for lesson number two, coming sometime next month. I hope this helped, and if you have any questions, not about my crotch, but if you have any general questions, please drop them in the comments below, and I will answer as many as I can. And, um, yeah, I will see you at the next video. I love you and I hope to talk to you very soon. And as always, y'all, one love. <laughs> no crotch. None. <laughs>